Red Hat is responding to the open source community. In this statement, the vice president of core platforms engineering at Red Hat, Mike, is addressing the reactions and criticisms the company has been receiving after their announcement of removing access to the git.centos. Dot org sources, which would likely affect those like Alma Linux and Rocky Linux, who are binary clones of upstream RHEL. The new post is called Red Hat's Commitment to the Open Source, a response to the git.centos.org changes. And the quote that they chose to highlight is over here on the right. This news that CentOS was going to close some sources up has received mixed reviews across the Linux community with lots of people expressing frustration and disappointment at this time with Red Hat's actions. Some even saying that they're going to get away from using Red Hat enterprise Linux versions, especially what type of impact this is going to have on the open source community, including other companies and users. So let's read through and comment on some of this. So again, this is from the vice president of core platforms engineering at Red Hat, Mike says, I spent a lot of time walking this weekend thinking about the reaction from our industry to my last blog post. We've been called evil and I was called an IBM exec who is installed to turn Red Hat closed source. And that's only the nice stuff. So let's clear things up. Mike announces themselves and then says that they've been around for 16 years and has worked there since being a volunteer on the Fedora project. Open source and all that the phrase entails are very important to them. Over the last week, they've seen many unkind and untrue things being said about the hard working Red Hatters who, like him, value the work to its core. And despite what's being currently said about Red Hat, we make our hard work readily accessible to non-customers Red Hat uses and will always use an open source development model. When we find a bug or write a feature, we contribute our code to upstream. This benefits everyone in the community, not just Red Hat and our customers. We don't simply take upstream packages and rebuild them at Red Hat. Thousands of people spend their time writing code and enable new features, fixing bugs, integrating packages, and then supporting that work for a long time. Something that customers and partners need. This is about the hours and late nights we spend backporting a patched up code that is now five to 10 years old or older. At any given time, we are supporting three to four major release streams while applying patches and backports to all. Additionally, we help develop fixes for issues in RHEL and don't just apply them to RHEL. They are applied upstream first to projects like Fedora, CentOS Stream, and the kernel project itself. And we then backport them. Maintaining and supporting our operating system for 10 years is a Herculanean task. There's enormous value to, in the work that we do. The overall sentiment here seems to be that Red Hat does extensive work and their contributions hold great value to the open source community. They continue on by saying, we will always send our code to upstream and abide by the open source licenses our products use, which includes GPL. Continuing on, when I say we abide by the various open source licenses that apply to our code, I mean it. I was shocked and disappointed about how many people got so much wrong about the open source software and GPL in particular, especially industry watchers and even veterans who I think should know better. The details, including open source licenses and rights matter. And these are things Red Hat has helped to not only form but also preserve and evolve. And the emphasis here is on, I feel that much of the anger from our recent discussion, decision around the downstream sources comes from either those who do not want to pay for the time, effort, and resources going into RHEL or those who want to repackage it for their own profit. This demand for RHEL code is disingenuous. Continued on, they explain how we have to pay people to do that work. Those passionate contributors grinding through those long hours and nights who believe in open source values, simply repackaging the code that these individuals produce and reselling it as is with no value added makes the production of this open source software un unsustainable. That includes critical backporting work and future features and technologies under development upstream. If that work becomes unsustainable, it will stop and that's not good for anyone. Which is an interesting statement because in this last bit here, I believe we have a little bit of overgeneralization or maybe even a lack of evidence. I'm not sure who they're referring to exactly when it comes to these entities that are repackaging the work that REGL is doing into basically what is claimed to be their own profits. It'd be interesting to hear some actual named out entities as well as some evidence of this. Not saying that it doesn't exist, but this seems to be a bold claim from Red Hat itself and can seem a little bit disingenuous in nature since these statements themselves seem to lack the evidence or at least overgeneralize the unsupported claim of regression through a more clear explanation. But nonetheless, we'll continue on to read through some of the rest of this. I want to specifically mention the rebuilders different from the distributions that might, for example, add a new architecture or compile flag. We fully support you in expanding Linux capabilities rather than imitating them. There was a time not too long ago, Red Hat found a value in work done by rebuild 
builders like CentOS. We pushed our SRPMs out to get CentOS.org in a neat package that made them easy to rebuild. We even debranded it for them. More recently, we have determined that there isn't value in having a downstream rebuild. The generally accepted position that these free rebuilds are just funnels churning out RHEL experts and turning them into sales just isn't reality. I wish we lived in that world, but it's not how it actually plays out. This also seems a little telling because why would they wish they lived in this world? If they're not trying to turn funnels and that's not the whole point of this recent decision, then why wish for the opposite? Anyways, slight misphrase maybe. We'll continue on with instead we found a group of users, many of whom belong to a very large IT organizations that want the stability, life cycle, and hardware ecosystem of REGL without having to actually support the maintainers, engineers, writers, and many roles that create it. These users also have decided not to use one of the many other Linux distributions. In a healthy open source ecosystem competition and innovation go hand in hand. Red Hats, SUSE, Canonical, OS, and Microsoft all create Linux Linux distributions with associated branding and ecosystem development efforts. These variants all utilize and contribute Linux source code, but none claim to be fully compatible with the others. Ultimately, we did not find value in our HEL rebuild and were not under any obligation to make things easier for rebuilders. This is our call to make. That brings me to CentOS Stream, of which there is immense confusion. I acknowledge that this is a change in the long-standing tradition where we went above and beyond, and change like this can cause some confusion. The confusion, that confusion manifested as accusations about us being closed source and about alleged GPL violations. There is CentOS Stream, the binary deliverable, and CentOS Stream, the source repository. The CentOS Stream GitLab source is where we build REHEL releases in the open for everyone to see. To call REHL closed source is categorically untrue and inaccurate. CentOS Stream moves faster than REHL, so it might not be on head, but the code is there. If you can't find it, it's a bug. Please let us know. They also provide a no-cost Red Hat developer subscription and Red Hat Enterprise Linux for open source infrastructure, the developer subscription provides no cost REHL to developers and enables usage for up to 16 systems, again, at no cost. This can be used by individuals for their own work and by REHL customers for the work of their employees. REHL is an open source infrastructure and it is intended to give open source projects, whether or not they're affiliated with Red Hat in any way, access to no cost REHL infrastructure and development needs. I know this is a long one, but it is interesting to hear about how REHL is responding to all the criticisms that they've received over their last few days on their latest announcements. If you're unfamiliar with the announcement and want to go more in depth, I do have a video about that announcement in the description below. It would be nice to hear from everyone in the comment section below about this post as well but we'll finish reading the last little portion before making some remarks. Finally, I'd like to address every open source company out there. Whether your code is open today or you're considering moving to an open source model, by any measure Red Hat has made it. And I hope many open source companies can succeed as we have. You can decide for yourself whether downstream rebuilds are valuable for you and it's your call to make it easy or not. Simply rebuilding code without adding value or changing it in any way represents a real threat to open source companies everywhere. This is a real threat to open source and one that has the potential to revert open source back to into a hobbyist and hackers only activity. We do not want that. And I know our community members, customers, and partners don't want that. Innovation happens in the upstream. Building on the shoulders of others is what open source is about. Let's continue to drive innovation, support one another, and keep moving forward. So it seems like in conclusion, at least in my opinion, Mike is encouraging the open source community and other companies to consider implications of distributors that rebuild downstream and trying to emphasize adding value through collaboration instead of rebuilding and redistributing what's already been made. I do want to talk about this specific quote here that they have highlighted. It seems like the statement is claiming that rebuilt code without making changes is a threat to open source companies. But I don't really understand this idea here, at least without more specific or concrete evidence. It just seems unsub unsubstantiated. So I'm not really sure what this threat is is and why it's so harmful. I would have liked a more in-depth understanding. And again, it seems overgeneralized because it says right here, open source companies everywhere. So this is a threat to everyone. I'm sure there are many different business models out there, even amongst the open source community. So there's different ways to contribute and benefit from each other in an open source environment. I don't think that all open source companies here are going to be equally impacted by this threat of what I believe they share as a rebuilding, or at least that's what I'm calling it. Is it as big of a deal as they're making it out to be? I'm not sure. Let me know what you think about that. And finally, the last little portion here is this 
right here where it says, and one that has potential to revert the open source back into hobbyist and hackers only activity. That characterization seems to be overblown, at least in my opinion. We've come a long way from hobbyists and hackers only using Linux and open source, especially with one of those things actually being CentOS. Before it was CentOS in production environments, that was the REHL upstream clone, which REHL decided to stop offering, which is fine. That's their choice. But to only focus on what seemingly is the production environments, well, in my mind, that means that we're still in the hobbyist and hacker only stage outside of production environments, which I believe is not true. So maybe a clearer explanation would help us understand these arguments better from Red Hat. I do appreciate them reaching out and trying to address the community. This will definitely have an impact whether or not we like it on alternative distributions, especially the one-on-one -on -one binary clones of REHL. Will there be people moving over to Debian or, or OpenSUSE as a replacement to REHL? Seems to be claimed that IBM hasn't had much influence or any role in this decision, at least according to the beginning of this post. As far as the legal or licensing concerns, I do believe REHL is going to stay on top of these, and that was also addressed in this post. I'm interested to see how this one will play out amongst the community and REHL. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.